Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome. I feel like saying we're back. <laughs> Thank you for joining us this morning as we discuss career strategies for uncertain times. This is part one of a three-part series designed to help professionals make informed decisions to enhance their careers. I'm Jen Fitzke, recruiting lead with my co-host and our president, Tom Gettle. Good morning, Tom. Good morning. So this discussion will also be recorded for our 26th episode of the Conic Blueprint podcast. So for those of you listening to our podcast, welcome. Now, found on your favorite podcast players, the Conic Blueprint covers topics at the intersection of careers, leadership, and technology. So the job market is always changing, and it may feel like it's transitioning into a new phase. While some large companies are making headlines with layoffs, companies of all sizes competing with the relentless demand for talent. We are in Minnesota and our state's unemployment rate is at a record low of 2% down from 3.2% last year, while companies are starting to be cautious during their budget planning meetings. So we're here to make some sense of all of this and give our insights into what you can do to grow your career regardless of what 2023 will bring. Yes, thank you for that, Jen. And thanks for everyone who's tuning in to LinkedIn Live. Uh, so with LinkedIn Live, uh, you do have the option to post in the comments section uh, and feel free to, to post there any questions you might have throughout this discussion. Uh, we'll get to them as soon as we can. We'll make sure that they get answered here today. Uh, so uh, put your questions or comments in uh, that box and we'll get to them. And also uh, just for networking purposes, if you are between positions or actively looking for a new position, feel free to network there in that uh, comment section. Uh, mention that you're open to new opportunities and people can see your, your profile link from there. Uh, if you wanna add anything about what you're looking for, feel free to do that as well. Uh, feel free to make it uh, conversational and make it uh, part networking as well. So uh, appreciate everyone uh, joining us today. Uh, so yeah, so like Jen mentioned, for the first of this three-part series, we kind of want to take a, a little bit of a step back and, and get a bigger picture uh, of what you might want to think about as you set the strategy for your career and then start executing up upon that. But before we get to that, I wanted to check in with Jen, uh, just a question that we get asked uh, often, regardless, uh, just kind of part of our role is, is how, how, Jen, how you see the Minnesota market for manufacturing and, and building engineering roles. Uh, so Jen, how has the job market been lately? It's still really good. Um, this morning I did a quick search on Indeed for our market, well, for our state rather. Sure. Um, and even more specific for my niche, for which is mechanical engineering, that's even more niche -y. I'm like all of manufacturing, mechanical, all of that. Um, so I just did mechanical and engineering. There were over 1,200 jobs. Um, I went, it, I dropped mechanical and I put engineering and there were over 3,500. So there wow. are jobs there. Obviously, they they get specific in what they're asking for, but the jobs are there. Yeah. Uh, and like we did our, lap, I don't remember how many ago, I think two podcasts ago, we talked to uh, one of the state's senior demographers and there's two jobs for every one person. Right. In the state of Minnesota. So, yeah, that's, that's still a, that's a really strong number. That, that number really isn't isn't changing. And I know that on a national level, uh, the overall economy is still generating uh, jobs every month. And then the uh, average hourly wage rate is is continuing to rise, which is uh, good right. news for, for anyone, uh, anyone um, in the job market and in not uh, still a uh, very healthy uh, job market overall from from my perspective. And it sounds like you're seeing that as well, Jen. I am. Yeah. I, and I, and the candidates I work with, they're, they've got two, three, four, sometimes multi, more than that offers to pick from. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's still, it's still a good market. Yeah. So it's a little bit, I mean, it's, it's perhaps, I mean, I, I feel like it has changed a little bit maybe from last quarter, but at the end of the day, it's still very strong, you know, maybe, you know, going from, you know, going from, uh, 200 miles an hour to 170 miles an hour, right? It's still really fast, uh, but a, a little bit slower. And, and um, like you'd mentioned, uh, two jobs for every job seeker. Uh, so it's still mm -hmm. a still incredibly strong market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you said, there are some there are some that get. 
I'm thinking specifically of like the MEP recruiting that I do, like mechanical, yep. electrical, plumbing. Um, certain parts of that area have slowed a little bit as companies are waiting to see what happens and in going into next year, but they're not, they're just waiting. The work is, you know, they're, they're just waiting. Sure. So, yeah. That's going to come back too. Definitely. So regardless of all of that and what happens, so much of that is outside of our control. So to everybody out there, our listeners and our viewers today, we'd love to spend some time discussing what we can do to help your careers, regardless of what's going to happen. So Tom, when you think about professionals having a career strategy, what are your thoughts on what that yeah, means? Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. And, and I think Jen and I both uh, really enjoy talking about this topic. It's uh, we're, we're passionate about uh, recruiting. And one of the things that we love to do is working with uh, every individual person that comes to us looking for a new position. And, and uh, many times they're responding to an open position. But um, what uh, what we wanted to do was was take a, a little bit of a step back and before a uh, professional jumps right into their career search, uh, maybe you know, pause for, for a moment and zoom out and think about their career in, in more uh, perhaps five or 10 year increments. So instead of thinking, you know, what what is my next job? It's more to zoom out a few years and really think about what what do you want your career to look like in five years? Because, as of course, um, similar to your life goals, uh, you know, where perhaps what what part of the country do you want to live in? Uh, when do you want to get married? How many kids do you want to have? <laughs> All of that. You kind of think in longer term longer term um, plans and, and similar to your career, it's uh, sometimes helpful to, to pause and, and zoom out a few years uh, and think about in in five years, where do you want to professionally? Do you see yourself with an advanced degree or maybe it's uh, more technical knowledge? Um, in five years, perhaps you want to be either in a leadership role or in a higher leadership role. Um, either strategy is completely fine. You know, Jen and I work with candidates that really want to focus on the technical side and get very deep technically. Uh, others uh, uh, naturally want to move into management and, and leadership. And those are those are all really good things to to think about. And um, if it helps to, to journal about those types of questions and just to bring clarity in uh, terms of what you're thinking and feeling about it um, can be really helpful. So we wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about that and you know, just prompt questions and the whys behind those questions uh, to help help um, everyone get get an idea of how do I actually plan for you know the next five or ten years in their career yeah absolutely I think about one of the first questions that I have when I talk to candidates who call and they want to just jump right into the job description and I always say you know I'll talk about that but can I just learn more about you first? And yeah. what do you really love about your career? What drives you? What gets you excited to go to work every day? And if you're not excited, why? Um, and we talk, I talk about, again, my lens is is engineering. So sorry, everybody, if you're architecture or medical, <laughs> I'm like healthcare, I'm gonna talk about engineering specifically. That's just the world I've lived in for over 20 years. So I talk about, you know, are you, do you like the technical portion of it? Do you like leading people as a project manager and bringing a lot of different cross-functional teams together to, to meet a common goal and to drive a project forward? Do you like to, are you more of a sales and marketing person? Do you want to go more into program management or are you a leader? Do you want to become more in management and part of the executive team with the company? Mm -hmm. And they're all very specific paths and sometimes people don't know what yeah. they want to do and you need a variety of of different positions um and maybe maybe that's why you are looking for a new position because you're not you're not quite comfortable in your current position it's it it just kind of doesn't feel like the right fit but you don't know exactly what you want to do right. so i've had people take two or three jobs and it finally clicks and sometimes if the company is big enough they're able to do rotations and and that sort of thing and that's yeah. great but if you're at a smaller company that can be hard but if you are at a smaller company i always talk to people and ask them please go talk to 
whoever you need to talk to at your company because they want to retain you more than lose you. Obviously, yeah. they want to give you yeah. the opportunity Definitely. to stay. Yeah, I think when you and I start talking to a candidate, I think we have a similar approach. Right. We don't go right into the job description. It's like, okay, no. you have this or that. It's really, you and I think are similar uh, in that we just want to get to know the person. We want yeah. to get to know their their goals. And to ask, we like to ask more open-ended questions, like where do you see yourself in, in three to five years? And it's a cookie cutter question. But when I ask that question, I'm not thinking like, okay, is this, is this person going to be a dead match for this position? I'm zooming out a little bit and thinking, where do they want to go? Do they, do they want to move into leadership? Um, do they want to move into a particular field, a particular discipline within the technical field? Because I'll, I still want to walk them through the advertisement that they responded to. But usually what happens in my mind is like companies just start bubbling up and opportunities start jumping, jumping up like bubble thoughts, like, Oh, they, they're actually going to be really good over here and you get to know them a little bit more and, and understand you know, what, what drives them, um, what, what areas of their career do they really get excited about? Mm-hmm. And you're, then you, we can have a little bit more of a consultative approach and tailor their search for a position that they weren't even thinking about. Or maybe there's a company that we know that they're always hiring, but I think we think that gosh, this could be a really good technical fit and also a really good cultural cultural fit. You talk to a candidate; it's you know, it's part matchmaking. So you're um, of course matching the, the positions, but you're also you want to learn about what their long term career goals are, so you can help guide them in that right direction. I really appreciate that you said that. The other thing that I was thinking of as you were talking about that is um, you you touched on you know what's important to you, and I think. So for instance, I talked to somebody yesterday. I was all excited because he he was a mechanical engineer that did this specific role. And I had a company that said, hey, I'm looking for somebody. I'm like, oh, my God, I just talked to this guy. Yes. So That's I called point. him and I got all excited about it. I was excited, but yeah. I told him more about the company. I was just honest about you know their size and their relatively flat organization and, and about the work that they do. And... He said, well, it's good, but it's not great. And I said, okay, what's not great about it for you? And he's like, well, really, it's the location. Like, oh, well, okay, sure. So then we had to talk, we had talked about, I thought it would be fine. It was the freeways that he had to take to get there weren't all that great. But um, it had to do more with the culture of the company as well. The more I dug, it wasn't just location. I think some people are willing to drive a little further if it's the absolutely right fit. Sure. But it, you know, we just talked, to, we got to talk about, okay, this is how they run their company. This is the culture of their company. What's important to you? Let's talk a little bit more about that. Right. Um, so he really got to go internal a little bit and people do share a lot of that with us, which yeah. we appreciate. And that's why it's important to have that relationship with any recruiter that you're working with, whether it's us or the recruiter at the company, you know, just being honest with them about what's important to you so they can put you in the right position or at the right company. Anyway. Um, But yeah, what is, what is your career mindset? What are your guiding posts? What, what do you want that work-life balance to look like? Um, some people, I don't know, I, there's the more that I've talked to people, the pandemic shifted everything, right? Sure. It shifted what work-life balance means because we had to find a new one if we're working from home. Um, and if you had people at home with you, that looked very different. I talked to somebody else the other day this week, doesn't want to work from home. Thank you very much. Family's at home and I want my time. And <laughs> you know, so we, we worked about that. Not naming names. Like, oh, no, name yeah. names today. <laughs> no, 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 no names. I was like, yeah, it's hybrid. It's, he's like, oh no, that's okay. <laughs> I'm yeah. gonna, I'm, I, I, I like my office time. So we chuckled about that because I told yeah. him real quick story. I told him about the day that I brought my twins to daycare for the first time for drop off. And I'm like, I danced out of that place because I was so excited. I got a break. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. What about you? You mentioned there. You mentioned the term career mindset. 
-hmm. from that are you are you thinking um just how someone approaches their career like what is it for example i have the, you've interviewed thousands of people um over right. the, the course of, of your work and some people and it's 100 fine it's great it's good for us to know some people just want that next job like i just yeah. i just like to do this i just want i've been doing this for you know a number of years and i've kind of found my sweet spot this is what i like to do but yeah. from a mindset mindset perspective can you talk about that a little bit um what what does that term mean to you to me it really comes down to what the person values mm -hmm. um some yeah. people and I'm only being careful because I, there's no judgment behind any of this because what is important to you is important to you. That's fine. Totally. If it's if it's money at the end of the day and you're always looking for the next job that pays more, that's one guiding post. If you are looking for a position where you know you might work 55 hours a week and it might not be the best paying job in town, but my gosh, the people that you work with are amazing. The company ownership is amazing. The product that you're putting out, you're extremely happy with, you know, maybe that extra, you know, maybe you do get to work, you know, that intrinsic motivation mm -hmm. versus the extrinsic, ex external motivation. I think you have to really do some soul searching on what's important to you. And sometimes it's tough because you might want that intrinsic but there are life events that are, you know, dictate that you go make more money. Mm -hmm. You know, people at wallets are really tight right now. And I get that. I still, the two main, it's been this way all year. When people call me, I'm looking for a better opportunity and I'm looking in more money. Those mm -hmm. are still the, the, yep. the number two or the yep. top two reasons people yep. are looking to leave. I think the key that you're trying to, what you're, um, maybe suggesting to be mindful of is that career mindset. So as you're going yes. through your career search, whether it's an immediate career search or three years down the road, if, if you, however you want to, however uh, people listening want to do this journal about it, just have it in your mind. But as you start, whichever process that is, uh, right. whenever it is, whether it's a job search or you're thinking, gosh, I need more technical ability to get there to keep that mind, that career mindset, um, be aware of that so you can come back to it. And as you, start to go down a job search um, or think about shifting. If you have that mindset, of course, that's tied to your values, is this in line? Is this supporting my mindset or is, is it departing from my overall career uh, mindset? Is that, is, is that a right? That's way a better to way to put it. No, no. It's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> I was just thinking about, you know, we've all talked to the person who they'll call it a misstep in their career and you see it on the resume, sure. it's that job that was six months or three, it mm -hmm. could be anything. It, you know, they maybe have, it's bookended by long-term jobs and there's that one job. And it's usually, um, it can be for a variety of reasons, but I think about the people who moved away, made a decision in spite of yeah. these guiding posts that we're talking about or the career mindset and, um, Maybe it was a, a risk that didn't pan out, but sure. um, that I generally see that on when I see that on a resume. Yeah. And again, no judgment, people. We've <clears throat> we've all had those. I worked contract on a job and took a job that was you know it 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 met the need at the moment. Sure. Um, that was before I worked here, but. Um. <laughs> yeah, right. but it's it's helpful through even someone's job search, right? If if perhaps someone gets gets toward the end of the job search, and you know, um, like you said, compensation is always a very important part for anyone, as it as it should be. Um, and if you're talking about maybe you know a a few percentage points in in annual salary, if people get caught up on that number, oh, it's X amount right. more, but it's actually, you know, maybe perhaps a, just a few percentage points, that might be a good point to reflect on your mindset and your career strategy and goals. Like, okay, which one of these two forks in the road, which one of these two paths will help me get to my goals? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for today's conversation, for people, 
just know that in our next two podcasts, we're going to get into more detail and more nitty gritty. But I, yeah. I think that's really important for today, just that message that we're trying to get across. And what are your values personally? How do you tie those to your job? Can they be intrinsic in the job that you have? Because for some people, it's not, you know, it's, it just isn't for a variety of reasons. The company doesn't match their their personal values. And for some mm -hmm. reason, that's, and for some people, that's the reason that they're looking. Yeah. Or yeah. want to look. And, you, you know, part of, I think part of what, at least what I, what I see in, in working with candidates as they think about their longer term goals, there is it, for me, a couple of, of different angles that I see come up is, is either someone that want, they want to advance more technically um, yeah. or they want to move into leadership. And right. I'm curious to get your thoughts, if, like how, like, as you're talking to those candidates, like how, how do you talk through that with them? If someone, if someone you're meeting with someone, let's say I'm, I'm the candidate and the candidate says, well, mm -hmm. Jen, I, I think, I think I might want to go into management, but I'm not sure. Like how, how like, is that just, cause I mean, to be honest, like I've, it's, it's important because I've seen, I've seen um, candidates say that and do that mm -hmm. and then regret it immediately. Mm -hmm. They get into leadership and they come back like, and they come back, Tom or hey, hey Jen, like I took this management position. It's just not me. Just, it's just, I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy the conversations I need to have now. How do I, I know I need to go back, like quote unquote, go back to go forward again. And you know, on a resume, if someone is an engineering manager and then they're not, to go back, that conversation, then um, it, it, it's different, right? It is. So there's a few different parts to your question, I think. The first one is, how do yeah. I do it? Yeah. And and what are the steps that I take? And the first thing that I that I ask them is, what, what uh, informal leadership opportunities do you mm -hmm. have available to you at your company? Or what have you yeah. already done? What projects have you led? What committees have you been on? Um, you know, getting yourself more front and center to management and catching their attention and taking on additional responsibility. Cause it is at the end of the day, it's taking on additional responsibility and being responsible sure. for things other than your immediate tasks. So that's the first thing that we talk through. And if they haven't done it, that's where they need to start. If they're, if they've already done that and part two of your question, I've taken this management position boy, you know what, the people leadership, it maybe isn't exactly what I wanted, like from the discipline, hiring and firing and write-ups and reviews. Yeah. And like, that's not the part that they love, but they do like leading projects. Right. Well, that's fine. I've worked with many project or engineering managers or former engineering managers who've taken on project management positions. That's actually more common than people think. Sure. Um, and that's, that's, those are all transferable skills. Right. Between the two. Yeah. There, there might be, perhaps there's a, there's a thought in many candidates mind or any professionals mind that a management track and leadership track is the way to go. Like that's right. just how people progress. Like it's, we've been told right. what you do in your career, you do this, this for a number of years, and then you should go into management. Like, but you and I have both worked with technical experts that just right. love what they do. They get paid extremely well, more than right. leadership many times to be a deep subject matter expert. And they just have the time of their lives, their entire career. And they, <laughs> many yeah. of them never retire. They're just having so much fun. They just don't, they don't ever want to give up that, the technical nature of their work. Exactly. And how do you do that? You, you become the expert in your field. You continue with your education. You go to the conferences um, getting out of your comfort zone, if you have the opportunity to present, sure. then by all means, take it, uh, you know, work on that personal and professional development. If you are going to be doing something like that and you're dreading it, you know, there's organizations that people can join for, for personal improvement, like Toastmasters. There's, I'm full of suggestions. Yeah, <laughs> Email me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, it's awesome. If there are any uh, questions or comments from the audience, drop them in chat and Jen and I will answer them away. Um, so really, really from there, Jen, um, any final um, questions, any any part of this that we want to um, explore a little bit more? 
I didn't mean to rhyme there. It just came out. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've touched on a lot of things. We talked about, you know, looking at what your current position and company are and do are they a fit with you? not only from the technical work, but from your intrinsic value and what's important right. to you. And I think what you and I have talked a lot about, we've, we've talked about money just a couple of times. Yeah. And our point to people, it can't be all about the money at the end of the day, especially, you know, we're talking about uncertain times. It's the title of our, of our podcast today. If, when, if we get to a recession, and there are layoffs, the people that are going to go in at the higher end of the salary, closer to the start of the recession, are at higher risk of a layoff. Mm -hmm. it, they just are. So that's just something to think about. It can't be all about more money at the end of the day. What else is going to feed you and drive you? Yeah. And even even on top of that, without a recession, I remember what the percentages are, it was, you know, Several months after the "quote unquote" um, great resignation right. that started coming out, I think it was a ridiculous number, like sixty or seventy people that switched during the great resignation regretted it mm -hmm. or weren't happy at their new role, mm. and were either you know coming back to the old employers asking if there was a different opportunity, um, or they were looking again within six months. So it's mm -hmm. it does you know part of they have to wonder okay if if the candidates who switch positions during that phase, they got what they wanted. Why then were, did, didn't, were they looking again so quickly after? And it's kind of to your point, like money's a huge deal, like, like, you know, no, no lightness about it. Um, but it's after that, like after, okay, yep. money got that. We'll take care of that. Then what, what bullet point two, three, and four, let's make sure those are taken mm -hmm. care of as well, because if they're not, then you could be starting the job search process all over again faster than you wanted to, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. I'm only laughing because I was thinking it made me think of the bachelor. Like, are you here for the right reasons? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not that different, is it? <laughs> Sorry, everybody. It just made me, I just thought about it. Yeah. 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 And it's, but it's, yeah, I think like our, our discussion, Jenny, what we wanted to get across is, before and before someone starts their job search, um, even if they are in the middle of a job search, there's no bad time. There's no wrong time to do this. Um, take a couple steps back, uh, mm -hmm. zoom out several years and and think, just think and you know, don't just spend time. Uh, if you wanted to journal on it, what, what do you want your career to look like in five years? Um, mm -hmm. And then you can kind of use that um, as a um, career mindset guidepost to come back and check mm -hmm. in on it no matter where you are in your, in your path and make, uh, uh, try to see if, if uh, what you're, uh, where you're going, make sure that um, rhymes with or as close as possible to, to um, the strategy and the mindset that you had. Yeah. And if you're, depending on where you are in your career, if you're more junior and you have a mentor, or even if you're more seasoned and you have somebody that, you know, talk to people about it, oftentimes, um, people here laugh at me because I have to, I think out loud, it mm -hmm. helps me just to talk things through. So yeah. <laughs> on a meeting with somebody, I'm just, oh, that's how I really feel. Okay. Got it. And then yeah, talk it out yeah. with people. Absolutely. <laughs> you get different perspectives and maybe somebody has gone through what you're going through or, and you don't even know until you've talked to them. Right. Right. Absolutely. That's awesome. Well, I think we'll wind down from here, Jen. We do have uh, Eric in the chat that gave a shout out Hi, to, Eric. <laughs> to the two of us. Hey, Eric, good to see you. <laughs> uh, if anybody has questions after this, uh, feel free to follow up with either of us. Jen has her email there. Mine is the, the same pattern, Tom at comicnetwork.com. Uh, this LinkedIn Live will be on our LinkedIn page from here moving forward. And then um, look for it on the uh, Conic blueprint podcast keep in touch here if you're not uh, following us on linkedin on our comic page keep tabs on that make sure you follow us because we do have two more follow-ups from here and then um, also on our page this is our 26th live event gen so we have, mm -hmm. have we have many other um videos and and uh, programs that we have uh, recorded from uh from these events so feel free to check us out and uh jen anything else 
Until next time. Go vote. <laughs> This, yes, will be, <laughs> this will work on if you're listening to the podcast, yeah. but it's voting day. Go vote. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Jan. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye.